So <laughs> this is a rant about the Nevada brothels. First of all, they have no business calling it legal prostitution because really it's not legal unless you work for a brothel, which is really like a pimp. And I will give you some examples on how the brothels out in the middle of the desert are exactly like pimps. First of all, oh, and let me just say something. The U.S. is the only country like this because most countries, when they say legal, they do mean legal, which means the women, the sex workers, are allowed to work independently on their own. And in Nevada, the sex workers cannot, are not legal to go and work legally on their own. They must, again, work for somebody else, which is, again, very much like a pimp. And I will give you these examples. And I had to write these down because I can't remember everything. I forget a lot of stuff because it's difficult when you can't stop your recording and then, you know, pick up from your thoughts where you left off. But anyway, first of all, they take a large part of your money, lots of your money, and it costs lots of money to go and travel out there. Uh, usually most women do not live in Nevada. They live in some other state, so they must pay for their flight. And then once they get into the city, they must pay again for their transportation out to the brothels because brothels do not give anything free. So they do take a large, just like a pimp, they do take a large amount of your money and you are not allowed to keep your tips. If they find out you keep your tips, then they will most likely will not let allow you back in to work for them. They want your tips too. That is crazy. Um, they also search your rooms. So if you think you can hide your tips, you probably can't because they can do room searches anytime they want. And they can also search your belongings. So they can actually go into your personal suitcase and your purse and they can look through all of that and to make sure you're not keeping your money, the, your tips or anything else they don't want you to have. Okay, so that's very much like a pimp. Uh, isolation. Pimps like to isolate you because they want to keep you away from your friends and your family. So you can't really have a realistic view of the real world and you become very, very isolated and entrenched in this world of thinking that you are actually a legal prostitute when really you're not. Um, really, you're under the control of a pimp and you're being isolated from your friends and family or children and you uh, lose personal contact with these people. And it's really hard on single mothers, especially mother people that have children and they have, must be away from their children for weeks and weeks on end for many years. For me, it was three years because I had been arrested and I didn't want to get in trouble again. So I had to go work in the brothels. I never would have otherwise done that. The only reason I did go and work for three years is because my probation was up after three years. And after the three years, my probation was up. I never went back to the brothels again. Some women get stuck there for their whole lives and they spend their whole lives in brothels and they never get to have family at all. They never have children, a lot of women. They've been there forever. I know of this one woman in particular, she's been there her whole life and she's never had any kids. And that's why you can't, you're basically working all the time. Three, again, control. How the system is structured, it's extremely controlling. They watch everything you do. You're basically there, and once you're there, you are there. You do not have the freedom to get up and leave and do whatever you want. If you do, they're not going to invite you back. Very much controlling. I can't even begin to tell you the way it's set up. Very strange compared to any other brothel in the world. I've worked in other brothels, like especially like in uh, Sydney, or not Sydney, but Melbourne, Australia, they're not controlling there. You can get up and leave whenever you want. I used to leave to go have lunch or dinner and come back when I want, leave when I want, go home when I want. 
you know, and they did not search my stuff and, you know, it wasn't controlling at all. So that's, that would be true, truly legal sex work for a brothel. But the way they are set up in Nevada, it's more like legal pimping. It's more for the brothel owners. It's more for their rights and their protection. It's not for the sex workers protection or rights at all. It's all set up the way it's set up. It's all about them making the most amount of money off of you. It's the sex worker. It's not about the sex worker at all. Uh, I would like to say also that very few women can actually be extremely successful, but at what cost they've given up their whole entire lives just to be successful for what? So you can what die and not even have any heirs to leave your money to it's bullshit. Um, fear, fear of job loss. You're always afraid that you're going to do something to piss them off and that you will lose your job there. And then you'll be on the street or, you know, arrested because once you leave there, you're, con you know, considered, um, a criminal. Um, they give you funny looks a lot of times if you have a client and he doesn't take long, but he say he's booked you for an hour, but say he's in a hurry and he doesn't want to spend the whole entire hour because he's done. A lot of times they'll give you funny looks and they'll question you like, why are you, why are you done so long? I thought you're, you know, you were supposed to be booked for an hour and then you have to go, Oh, but he was very happy, you know, and you, sometimes you even have to tell your client to go ahead and tell them that everything's good, that, he, that he's satisfied or happy, which is bullshit. It's like just another way that they control you and keep fear in, into you. Um, sexual harassment. If the brothel owner, I would never want to work for like, I, for worse, first of all, I would never go back to Nevada and work anyway because of sleep deprivation, but I'm not even going to get into that, to that one. It's basically torture, but yeah, the, if the brothel owner is a man, that's the worst because they can pretty much sexually harass you and get you and make you take, you know, um, their, their advancements and, and have sex with them because of fear of, again, of job loss or like me, I was, um, I had probation hanging over my head. So I did not want to lose my job there. Um, you have to put up with their harassment and whatever they want, or they just fire you. I actually fired myself because of sexual, sexual harassment and extreme abuse, but I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, again, um, fear, fear of arrest if you leave. So I don't think I have to say anymore. I think you understand what I'm saying. And please, decriminalization, full decriminalization now, decrimnewyork.org. Take care.